Thank you for joining us today as we honor and celebrate the life of Lisa Peverell. Everlasting care. We thank God for allowing us to know what one 
place. We're thankful for her witness and her walk, her work, her family, her faithfulness. Thankful for her eloquence and her benevolence. We thank God for allowing us to know a woman in this heaven and heaven. We're thankful that we were able to know and to love her and to be loved by her. Please join me in prayer. In these moments of turn to you, Almighty God, giver of all life, life here, life hereafter. May every soul hurting with loss, every one grieving, one loved, Lisa, now awaiting us, awaiting us in our own time, within a heavenly home with many rooms. May then every heart find rest and comfort within you. Have the words of scripture give us pause to realize life's universal truth. Creation is the result of your love. Abiding in heaven is the result. That long and full <coughs> and receiving a just reward for finishing the race and encouraged by her fight. And when I was struggling before meeting with the family on what word of hope to maybe offer, as if by inspiration, Philippians chapter 4, rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Find in love. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. May God have blessings for reading and receiving of the word. They hang there in the air, reverberating in this moment. Significance magnified. Keep on doing things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. It is hard to find a way to put a homily together for the reason and that sermon was crafted through the years of her life far more eloquently than there are those that when you see them or you hear their voice, it is but a reflex, an involuntary reaction to slumber. And there are those that you hope you hear their voice before they hear yours. There are those Kate makes I that you know, and you see them at the grocery store, though you don't need anything next, you dive down the cake mix aisle because they're not there. And you hope maybe all things work well, you'll be able to get past because they just draw 
all the energy out of you. But there are those that you reflexively and eagerly laugh and smile when you just think of them because they filled you full of them, showed you what was possible. For me, that's that's what Lisa was. Yeah. There's a parallel with the scriptures in the book of Judith. The book of Judith is within the canon in the Old Testament with the Orthodox Church and Roman Catholic Church. Within the Hebrew scriptures or the Protestant Church, it is put as one of the biblically related writings within the Apocrypha, the intertestamental time. So it's not Old or New Testament. It's in between. But the book of Judith and Lisa tell very much the same story. The book of Judith relates to God's deliverance of the Jewish people. This was handled, this was accomplished by the hand of a female. That's the that's the phrase used over and over. This, this motif was repeated constantly. God's deliverance by the hand of a female. This meant to recall the hand of God in Exodus, the deliverance of the Jewish people from Pharaoh. It's thought to be written about 100 BC in Judah. understood the moments of her day through faith and introspection, but not as those who organize and set the norms within her community. Another way of saying, she thought for herself and took no hostages. And so for me, I find your mother, your daughter, your your cousin, and so much like this. If she set her mind, her will towards something, you could either join her, you could watch her from the curb as the parade went by, <laughs> but you got out of her way. Otherwise, or you had a petite pair of shoe prints over your back <laughs> with love and respect. Nobody loved their children more than she. Nobody loved her parents more than she. Or her family. She was a, a star in a constellation of family stars. She achieved things that are measured and not measured by the world because of her faith verse that told her that she was divinely and uniquely made. She was singularly chosen and loved. And being the recipient of grandparents and parents' love, she wanted to offer the very same to those not only that she was in a relationship with, but especially those who others would overlook. Her heart broke. Lost before the gain of marriage. <laughs> she spoke truly about how she had two sons. Mother in laws don't always have that same poor in relationship. Therefore, the ageless jokes of comedians about mother in laws. Personally, I don't get it. I love my mother-in-law. I don't know why 
wife's mother-in-law. Now that has been a trick. But her heart broke for those whose hearts broke. But she was moved to action by those whose hearts broke and nobody heard. Nobody would pause. They would go by. And because of that, the outpouring of love that has been received, the people in the parking lot right now to support each of you, recognize and receive the same as I, that somehow Lisa made each person feel as if you were her special friend. You had that place set aside within all of those that was somehow special. And everybody was uniquely special. To see how comfortable she was in the pictures of friends and family and social events in different places was the very exact ease that I would see her on the floor sitting and talking with teenagers within the independent school district that they refer to as unaccompanied minors. You know, that means people that have no one. They left home. No. Because there wasn't anyone who loved him. Only if it was hurt or pregnant. Now, Who notices such things? Who counts and measures such things? Those unspoken, unwritten, unrecognized moments when somebody makes another special count and they should be listened to. And everything else in their life has proven to. What I can understand is where did this well of empathy arrive from? Right? Can we have a sense of shared experience? There's a former licensed marriage and family therapist. I gotta tell you, if there's anything more than that. In a room full of pastors, it's a room full of therapists. <laughs> because so many are trying to heal their own wounds, a wounded healer. But that's not what Lisa was. Her poem that we'll cover in a moment, a portion that she wrote to her grandparents about what she was giving thanks for. Her parents, that she loved spend time that a friend who we'll, we'll hear from in just a moment wrote about. It wasn't out of, out of some sense of shared experience and that I made it through those terribly difficult, horrible, broken families that there was no love and only violence. She had me. She can find the very best of her mother and father. Nobody more organized that attack things with more precision that I'm aware of than Lisa Manley. Now I understand their home is a bit of a project. <laughs> There's different forms and outlays of what organization can look like. But it wouldn't matter. As inexplicable as her passing is and difficult to accept, whether she passed at this time or years down the road, there will still be projects left unfinished because there was never going to be a time that she stopped crying. So we take note of that. 
The techno of how Judith didn't accept, but the village elders had to decree. Because it went across and went, went against what she knew to be God's way and what she felt to be her own way. And so she struck a path, and because of that, her hand delivered others. So I'll leave you with words from Lisa Michelle. Lisa was vibrant, radiant, and brilliant, both in her mind and spirit. She loved deeply and expressed it by action rather than a lot of words. You wanted her in your box, in your corner. She never took off her four ocean bracelet. Which when I first came across that, I mean, I had to look it up, and it's a, it instantly identifies the person as a member of the Clean Ocean Movement. So close to the heart of we live in Kansas City <laughs> because of all the deep blue water that surrounds us. It acts as a reminder to curb consumption of single use plastic and symbolizes today to a free ocean from plastic. And every bracelet purchased funds the removal of one pound of trash from the oceans and coastlines. And she wore it not because she felt that would clean the ocean, but because it was something she could do. Instead of looking at what can't be done, unable to be accomplished. So back to Lisa show, she loved a hokey tourist trap in North Georgia called Goats on the Roof. And there are. And you could be them. A sentence I never thought that I would come across. She was a great baker, the things that she loved, casino time with her mom and dad, morning calls with mom, selecting cheap cigars for her, visits with her kids, driving a red convertible with the top off and the music on, New Orleans, New Orleans jazz, Bob Dylan. And you also show the story. So you can ask her anything about politics, local or national, and know what was happening. She would. And she would have a strong opinion about it. She loved to debate and to spar intellectually, but she was so darn smart, it was hard to beat her. But she loved it when she got me in a fair intellectual fight. She didn't want to pull the grudge. She did. She forgave easily. She loved to give her mom fresh babies. She came up with funny sayings like, this needs to happen. This needs to unhappen. And let's just say, you didn't just say that. She's a great nurse if you're sick. She's a real to this court. She could write a complicated legal brief one week, and the next week build a professional baker's writing right back. And a built-in bookshelf while organizing the team drop-in program at the church. If you wanted something done, go to this. She loved a legitimate and peaceful protest. She knew the Bible and religious history more than some professors. You could get her to laugh so hard she would cry. She had a great and hilarious sick sense of humor. She could tell her something in confidence and no one would ever hear. She walked fast and looked a hard hike. She fell in love with Death Valley. She might go back in the winter. There's more. Those were the words written about her. Her words written about those that she loved and respected and part of would say to her parents in the 2002 poem. The table where we ate and the rug on which it sits, they were always together. So they shall be. The garden out back, though humble and messy, recalls lessons learned of growing people and food. The garden is where I've found the cycle of life, what is real, each seed.
season of the lifetime. You can always plan in the seeds. And I was visiting Monday about the garden that she and David put in. Realizing this then would be the fourth generation at least of such gardens. Seeds and very good. And yes, the fruit from this garden went to others. That love they were planted enabled not only those planted, but those who received of the bounty. Like the children sitting on the floor, because somebody was. So now, why don't we listen? Listen to words of remembrance. Brought first by David, and then by Hannah. I 
Okay, so Will wrote this, and I'm going to speak it. Um, whenever we have a question, we, whenever we have a question, we always said, I bet mom knows. Mom has always been the one we went to because she knew something on just about everything. And if she didn't know, she'd definitely find out for you. She always said she knew the most about stuff no one cared for until they needed to, like learning how to plumb, uh, get a plumber to shower. We had a running joke that if you asked her what time it was, she'd teach you how to build a clock. <laughs> That's the type of person she was, a creator and a teacher. She had a real joy of helping others, to which her most recent was the drop-in program for homeless team. We will always find ourselves wishing we could ask her what to do in a difficult moment. But they sit. Oh, my word. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the drop in program. Over these past few days, we have heard more and more stories on the impact she had here in such a short time. Watching her grow and evolve these last few years while she was up here makes this all seem so unfair. But those aren't the thoughts we should be having. Instead, we need to think about the legacy she leaves behind and all that she will do behind the scenes for us. We will always find ourselves wishing we could ask her what to do in a difficult moment. But thanks to years of watching her and following her advice, we know how to think about a problem carefully, consider how it will affect me and others and the world around me, and then choose the most loving course of action. Because that's what she loves to be. We love you, Mom. We will try our best to carry your love into the world all of our days.
Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the life of Lisa. Please feel free to leave a comment for the family in the comments to the video. And please feel free to watch from the beginning as the video will remain on the Facebook page and you can share it with others. Again, thank you for joining us today.